Well, it's basketball season again. Welcome to the 2021-22 Lone Star Conference Women's Basketball Media Day. Steve Gomez joining us, the head coach of the defending, two-time defending national champion, Lady Chef Basketball Squad. A squad that went 23-0 last season. Uh, captured the Lone Star Conference with a 15-0 mark, I believe, and then dang, you went to to Canyon, captured the South Central Region Tournament in a different twist where they faced Southwestern Oklahoma State, and then went to Columbus, Ohio, knocked off uh, Bentley College before knocking off a pair of Missouri programs, including Drury in the National Championship game in Columbus, Ohio. Coach, uh, you reflect on that. What element did that team have that the prior two national championship teams you've coached uh, uh, didn't have? Yeah, I think the quality, even from the start of the year, they, they uh, hung on to being adaptable. And obviously last year required so much uh, ability to react quickly to changing situations, you know, cancellations or delays or testing, whatever it was. And so it was a very adaptable team. I felt like on the court and off the court, they handled the chaos pretty maturely. And so to me, that was one of the differences. Uh, you know, every team is so unique, but that quality had to show itself much more last year than ever before. It was actually a 13-0 Lone Star Conference uh, record and, 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 and quite an accomplishment. Just, I don't know if it's one of those where you, you say, well, they beat this team there. They, they had a big win at home. It was the fact you had an unpredictable schedule with, with COVID adjustments on the fly. You're showing up for games that eventually didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, your own roster uh, could have been diminished, and, and, and you were still up for playing. Uh, COVID sanctions are a little bit intact this year. How are you going to, you know, what's different on how do you tackle the, the COVID question marks? Yeah, luckily, I mean, honestly, from the start of this year, I haven't even thought a bit about it. We haven't considered, you know, the masking, the distancing, the bench, uh, any of those issues. Uh, luckily with all the vaccinations, all our kids are, are pretty much free and clear just to compete and not worry about it. Uh, so uh, not knowing on the road how things might look different places, but fortunately uh, here in Lubbock and uh, our university has, has stayed pretty, pretty normal, whatever that is. And so uh, that hasn't been really a thought that's drawn any energy out of us of considering you know, this kid's sick or who's going to be out. Because last year it was constantly, you know, week by week with the testing, you never knew who was going to have to sit out. Uh, so that was very unique. Uh, last year, even playing the same team twice was really an interesting dynamic that this year uh, will go back to the way it used to be. Uh, so uh, who knows what's ahead. But as of uh, from the beginning of school till now, luckily, hasn't even been a thought. The difference, though, in the Lone Star Conference this year is if there is a cancellation, it's a forfeit, uh, which was not the case last year. Last year, you just did not play the game. But when you look at your schedule, Coach, a, a schedule that you've put together, it's, an actual, it's a piece of the schedule. Uh, there could be several teams going to the final site uh, for the Elite Eight tournament that, that have losses, and, uh, and, and your, your squad, uh, if, if they're fortunate to make it, may not be undefeated. And, and, and that's because you've got several games against teams that were, that were there at the Elite Eight last season, and you're also playing in a tip-off classic. You're going to Hawaii to face a team, uh, Hawaii Pacific, that was ranked number two most of last season. Uh, kind of dive into your schedule. Yeah, yeah. no one's ever accused me of being very intelligent uh, on or off the court. And so this is definitely proof of that because you know, with, with a shorter schedule last year and really not much non-conference, we wanted to play a lot of games this year. And to get a chance to go up to Montana uh, just to get that early season three-game weekend is going to be difficult in itself. Not only uh, three games in a row, but the opponents. I mean, we're playing great teams. Uh, you know, we go to Colorado for some tough games on the road. And then, you know, at home, we open up with two teams from the Elite Eight. You know, Damon and Lander are going to be here along with some other teams. Uh, yeah, and then we start in a conference pretty soon. You mentioned Hawaii. Uh, hopefully we can enjoy some travels, but not so much that we forget to play the games because there's just no givens. I mean, again, this wasn't a strategically scheduled season to where, well, we can get some wins here and there. We just want to play games. And after last year getting a shorter schedule, uh, we were just willing to play. 
And again, it's not, uh, there's nowhere we're going to go or even home games that are just, hey, we can just show up and we'll be fine. Now, which is sort of the way we like it. We want to have to compete because we just got to be good today. And so the schedule's coming. You know, we'll be playing just a little over, uh, you know, a few weeks away. Uh, but at the same time, we got to practice tomorrow and have a good day. I mean, that's all we can worry about. Uh, but if we're not good on a given day, yeah, our, our record will not reflect a lot of good things if we're not playing well, uh, which is a good thing, I think, because we don't want to get in the habit of not playing well. Luxury business trips is what I got out of that on the, on the <clears> schedule. <throat> uh, Coach, we're going to be talking with Allie Schulte uh, here after we wrap up with you. Everybody says, like, this is the same team as last year, but certainly not the case. <clears throat> what went into the seniors that didn't stay, the seniors that did stay, or now in grad school, all that kind of fun stuff, and, and also dive into some of the new talent that, that some of the fans uh, in your fan base are, are, are going to see this year, that are, they're going to be the new faces that, that are going to be effective on part of this Lady Shap squad. Yeah, so much of last year's adaptability was we started five seniors the whole season. You know, we had five seniors that had seen a lot. Uh, and so, you know, three of those are coming back uh, with, you know, Emma Middleton's going to be at ACU and be a great contributor to their program, you know, on and off the court, uh, a good opportunity for her. Uh, and then with Maddie Turner, a point guard last year who did so much for us on both ends of the court, you know, going on to speech the pathology school at Tech, uh, just that there wasn't a program at LCU for her to continue that. So she has life now going on for her. And we have a couple that are back for grad school here at LCU uh, with um, Allie and, and Ashton and Juliana. Uh, so we'll have five seniors again with Channing Cunyas and Laney Byrne moving from junior to senior. So it's another year we could have some kids that have been through some battles. Uh, but obviously you need more than just five players. And so we're going to need to have some depth off the bench. Uh, some returners that played, Audrey Robertson did a lot for us last year as a freshman. Uh, and so she's going to be ready to go and help us. Uh, you know, Whitney Cox, a junior this year, and it's time for her to step in a role and, and really contribute. Uh, lots of little things she can do. Uh, you know, Macy Maddox uh, as a sophomore point guard, backup player that can come off the bench, give us some good minutes. Uh, we're expecting things from her as well as, uh, you know, we have some other juniors and sophomores that'll be ready. Incoming kids that haven't been here. Uh, you know, Grace Foster is a freshman from Childress, Texas, who uh, will transition to college basketball pretty well. Uh, you know, a lot of times freshmen, it takes a little while for that mental, physical transition. But I think, you know, she's going to be ready to go. Uh, and we are our other new freshman, Audrey Spurgeon, uh, strong physical post player. It's going to she's going to develop into a great player for us over the years, as well as Reese Schumann from Houston Clear Lake. Uh, and then Carly Bostwick, a, a hometown kid from Lubbock who has come in and really competed at a high level and really uh, given us good looks in practice. And she'll be someone that's going to develop well. Rachel Hasse from Amarillo High is going to have some uh, a slight knee surgery that's going to take her out for a few months. But again, our five freshmen that came in are give us a good future moving forward as those five seniors graduate, you know, as well as our juniors and sophomores that are, uh, they'll provide a lot for us culturally on and off the court. Uh, so we have enough players. Uh, we, we need to make sure we have eight or nine that can really get it every night. I feel like most of your recruiting classes are just terrific shooting guards. This one I feel like is one of your tallest mm. on average size for a recruiting class. Was that, was that part of the tactic was to try to build inside knowing that you're, you're going to be losing Middleton and, and Robertson was probably a question mark because you're probably talking to these kids before uh, the seniors of last year made their decision. Definitely. Yeah, we knew we were going to be rotating out some inside players. You mentioned Juliana, Emma, uh, and, you know, we'll play with whatever, but these are great kids that fit our profile as, as far as the type of people they are and as well as if they have size and can play, that's a great bonus. So we did. This is the biggest class we've had, uh, you know, with Audrey and, and Reese and Grace size-wise. Uh, and so for the years ahead, it may transition a little bit of how we even play, you know, not shooting the three as much, maybe getting the ball inside a little more at times. Uh, but we want those kids to continue to develop into versatile players so they're not just inside players, but they do have good size. And so that sets us up for a number of years ahead of, of not necessarily having to go find post players. Uh, so uh, it, it's a good situation we're in right now with versatility, uh, older kids, younger kids, and a lot of kids in the middle that can do a lot of different uh, play inside, outside both. Coach, you went 1-0 and today. 
good job uh, <laughs> giving us a preview of what's come with the Lady <laughs> Chat Squad, because right now we're going to be talking with Ali Schulte. Mm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, we look forward to getting going. Well, now we're transitioning to one of the members of the Lady Shafts National Championship Squad. I guess she would be a two-time national champion. And can there be a third time? Allie Schulte joining us. And, and Allie, the pressure was there probably going into chasing down your first. That builds to chasing down a second through all the COVID the last year. And, and now the target must be really on your back. Yeah. Uh Coach Gomez put a sign on the locker room that has, it was like a bear and it had a target and he was like, this is you, embrace it. And I, we've always known that we've had that target um, from the, our soft, my sophomore year of winning. And uh, we felt it all year, that COVID year, even though we didn't get to compete in the playoffs. But I think we felt it even more last year and now even more this year, but all you have to do is embrace it. Well, Steve Gomez tries to keep it simple. Uh, some may not think that, but he always says, go 1-0 and every day. Mm -hmm. you've, you've been hearing that for five years. Is, uh, does it still sink in when he says it, or do you need new motivation? <laughs> no, I, that one's a pretty good one. Uh, he says it almost every, not every, only every game, but every practice. You just want to get better every practice, every day, every game. Just try to play your best and win one at a time. What went into your decision making on coming for a fifth year? You got the COVID exemption uh, from last from last season. What went into your process of of making a decision? Um, I just love it here. Honestly, I I didn't want to go out into the real world quite yet, and uh, winning last year definitely helped. I think we have another shot at being really successful. Well, everybody, you know, we talked to Steve about this earlier. Everybody talks about well, the whole team's coming back, but it's not, it's not necessarily the case. But when you look at this team as a student athlete, as a teammate, what do you like about what this team brings? And do you see any differences from last year? Yeah, there's a, obviously there's a new dynamic every year with every team, but I think this one's gonna be really special. We have five really good freshmen that make us five better every day. And, uh, the two that left, the two that are, have come in have really helped. I think we're all really versatile. All five can do anything on the court at all times. And then we have some new ones that are ready to come off the bench that didn't get to last year. Well, you're an individual that comes from a school of how many? How many did you graduate in high school? Three. So you graduate a class of three. Oh, 15, sorry. 15? <laughs> yes. So graduate the class of 15. You want to be the best in Nazareth. You want to be the best in the, the Panhandle. Uh, now your name is one of the best in Division Two. Is that a lot of pressure? Um, I mean, I don't really think of it as anything like that. I don't see myself personally as someone who tries to be the best in all of D2. I think uh, the way I play, I just kind of want to grab all the stats and not really rack up one certain one. So. And I think being here has helped because everyone can contribute. And so it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> the goals you set for this year, how much of those are selfish? I mean, <laughs> you, you have to have some selfish goals in there. But, but you, you, for someone that's really accomplished everything uh, with, with two national championships, how do you set goals for this year and what are they? Um, honestly, you just have to forget about the past. I mean, winning two cha national championships is a great accomplishment, but we just want to win one, one more, especially for the five coming in. We want to give them one more. And uh, personally, my goals probably would just be better, be better than I was last year. So a little mix of selfish and unselfishness, <laughs> which is what it takes to, <laughs> to put it all together as the Lady Shafts try to chase down a third consecutive national championship thanks for joining us sally best of luck this season thank you and that's a, a wrap on another edition of the lone star conference media day here on the lone star conference digital network